approach to make sure that they're committed to the academic qualities of our institution, the fabric of who we are as an institution, and to graduate our student athletes. Outstanding in, in how Frank has represented those, graduating 21 out of 22 uh, student athletes at the University of Miami. That's a, an unbelievable number and certainly exciting, and we knew that that was going to be the case with him. The second thing we talked about is the ability to be, be able to recruit on a national level and then clearly also on a regional uh, level. We had to have someone that had a familiarity with the footprint of the Big 12 as well as that ability to be able to attract uh, national recruits. Frank Haith has done that in an outstanding way and particularly how important that is now at Mizzou. For those of you that follow our program and are certainly familiar with this, uh, we have three scholarships available for next year and we have six scholarships available for the year after that. That's a lot of, a lot of scholarships, a lot of recruiting that's going to need to take place. So you needed to make sure you were identifying someone that could hit the ground running, national connections, Big 12 connections, and to be able to move us forward. And certainly Frank uh, is able to do that, has shown he's done that at Miami, has shown he's done that at a high level at the University of Texas and before that. The third area we talked about is mentoring and, and the responsibility aspect of who we are socially, the development of men, right? Men, not basketball players, men people that were going to grow as far as sons and brothers and perhaps husbands someday, fathers, whatever that may be, to model those behaviors and to do those in a way that are reflective of the culture of the University of Missouri. Uh, you will note, note that tomorrow when you meet Frank and his family that he certainly represents the highest uh, character and ideals relative to social responsibility and mentorship. Work ethic, and we talk a lot about that here in our program. You know, in the Big 12, and especially at our program at Mizzou, we always talk about our work ethic at, in, our, in our program, and, and part of that is because of this. In our league, to beat Texas, to beat Kansas, in basketball in particular, to beat uh, Oklahoma, to beat A&M, those four schools, but really the, the three, Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Texas A&M. I remember telling Robin Pinchton this when we were recruiting her to come here. I just saw her over there, so thank you for being here. Sorry to digress. you got to outwork them because you're not going to outspend them. Okay, so you better outwork them, you better out hustle them, you better out teamwork them, you better out discipline them. You got to do everything that you can because certainly for us, as we continue to build our program, we have to be overachievers to be able to succeed. And so we had to find someone that certainly exhibited that. And, and Frank does that in an outstanding way, a tremendous worker, a tireless worker. And also from a work ethic for us, it's important that they're team players. You don't want people that work in this silo, in this little bubble, but they, they got to be part of our institution, part of our community. And so that work has to spill over into our community as well too. At Mizzou, you are a tremendously public representative of our institution. There's a lot of responsibility that goes along with that. And that reflects not only on yourself, that reflects on your family and your loved ones. It's those people you represent. You accept those responsibilities when you accept the responsibility to be in positions of leadership that we have, particularly the visible ones. The basketball position at Mizzou is an extremely uh, visible position, one not only in our state, but throughout our country. So you have to identify people that not only represent those ideals, but are willing to accept that responsibility. You know, it's not always comfortable for people to know that you got to be on 24 seven and you're never ever off duty ever. And so you have to be recognizing the fact that that spills over to everything that you do and identify someone that was willing to accept that and do that in a way that reflected positively on all of us. And Frank does that. We wanted someone that wanted to be at Mizzou in the state of Missouri, be a Missourian person, be part of our team in our entire state, and be at Mizzou. Frank Haith, Pam, his wife, their family, they are committed to that. They are excited about moving to our community, raising their family, and developing not only our basketball program, but our entire team and their family right here in the state of Missouri. And obviously at the last is we had to identify somebody that had the ability to win. And there's no doubt about that. You have to be able to identify someone that has the ability to do that. And certainly with Frank, we believe we have found that. No question about that. And certainly he has had some success at Miami, and he's going to have a lot more success when he's, he's here at Mizzou. When you're looking at all that, particularly from a competitive standpoint, what you always want to look at is not only people. You want to look at people. You want to look at family. You want to take a look at qualities that surround all of these folks. But you also have to look at tools. When you identify people, you have to provide them with tools to be successful. And the one thing we know we have at Mizzou is we have outstanding tools. We have an outstanding institution. We have an outstanding athletic program. We have outstanding facilities. We have resources that allow us to be competitive in the highest levels. 
That isn't always the case, and I don't think that that necessarily was the case for, for Frank. And when he comes here to have access to that with his skill set, we believe that he's going to win at a very high level at our institution. So those seven things, as we talked about before, were applied throughout the entire process. They overlaid over every one of our considerations over the course of the last uh, 12 days. And then last night, we arrived at the decision that we were going to be recommending to the Board of Curators that, uh, that Frank Haith become our next basketball coach at the University of Missouri. So when that happens, there's a 24-hour waiting period. <laughs> because when, when you do that with the Board of Curators, they have to put out an announcement that says, within 24 hours, we're going to have a closed session of the Board of Curators. Now, remember that we can't comment on anything that's taken place. We wouldn't do that. We never want to get out in front of the board. And they've got to make sure that they have a meeting, and they have to be able to decide on the approval of that, which they did this evening. So what they approved is they approved basically a six-year contract. It is a six-year contract. It's a five plus one contract for Mike, uh, for Mike Anderson, for, for Frank Haith, I'm sorry. Um, and for Frank, it is a $1.5 million per year area. That would be what we call guaranteed income. There's a $100,000 annuity that goes along with that as well, too. And there's a number of incentives, performance-based incentives, academic, social, competitive-based incentives. Uh, and again, as I said, this is a, a six-year deal. Now, what will happen with us, which is standard for us at Mizzou, when we have all the signatures on that contract, it's fully executed, which could take a couple of days. Might take the first part of next week, just so be patient with us. When that happens, we'll let you know, and we'll invite everybody in. And we'll meet up in the stall cup room. We'll pass around the contract, the fully executed one. And I will go through step by step the detail of the entire contract so you know exactly what it says and exactly uh, what you know all of the definitions are in the, in the various areas. So we'll be doing that. But I at least wanted to let you know the general parameters of that uh, right now. Uh, so with that being said, uh, tomorrow uh, we'll have an opportunity to introduce Frank and his family to Tiger Nation. We're looking forward to that. I think that people, when they have an opportunity to meet him, see what he's all about, understand the commitment that he has towards academics, social responsibility, and winning, we're excited for our fans to get a chance to see that and know that he's going to do a great job leading the Tigers forward into the future. So that's my opening comments, I guess, for you this evening. But I also wanted to allow you some opportunities to be able to ask some questions. Mike, the, uh, Let me start uh, with Mike, please. What overwhelmed at your selection, and uh, how do you address that? Well, I think with our fans, as we have t very passionate fans, I th I've always said that, and we all know that for the 13 years I've been here. And certainly I think that when, when, when you're announcing a new coach, right, and there's not a lot known about the particular candidates that you may have out there, and someone comes to the forefront that perhaps people weren't looking at or identifying, it becomes a surprise to folks. And when that happens, and you don't have the opportunity to be able to, re, you know, to follow that up with all the things that we're talking about right now, I think in that time of uncertainty and not knowing exactly what all the parameters were and what are taking place and our focus on that, I th certainly think that passion will come through with that. And so with that being said, now that we're able to come out and be able to talk about the entire thing, our hope would be that those passionate fans are going to be excited. They're going to embrace Frank Haith. They're going to embrace his family. They're going to look forward to the future of our, of our program. But it's absolutely understandable by, by having limited knowledge on some things that they may have a reaction to that. Mike, can you speak to just, you've outlined all the, the reasons that he does fit the parameters, but the one thing, the reason I guess the fans have squawked is just the sheer record. What is it that you see in his coaching that tells you that that record doesn't necessarily stand for what he's doing? Well, I, I got I to gotta think, and I do think, uh, Vahe, that the environment that we have here at Mizzou, that I think when we place, and I believe this, we're confident that when we place Frank and his team in this environment with the resources that we have, with the uh, uh, success that we have had, particularly over the course of the last three years with Mike, a lot of the success that we had under Quinn, a lot of the success that we had under Coach Stewart, we believe that with all those skill sets, you put him in an environment with the type of resources we have and the opportunities to succeed, I think that there's no doubt that he's going to be able to do that. Now, that being said, he did not have access to those same levels of resources where he currently is. And I think when you take a look at competing in the ACC, 
which is arguably one of the best, if not the best, basketball conferences in the country, and you're going head-to-head, -head, day in and day out, with Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, Wake Forest, on and on and on, and you're competing your tail off, but you don't have the same level of resources that everybody else does, which we think we, we have that opportunity. We believe that once we put them in here with that type of experience and that type of level of experience at Texas in particular and uh, at Miami, that he's going to thrive in this environment. And we believe that. So that was our thought process. Frank Haith has always been there. It's been right there and something that we were identifying. We were doing a lot of our due diligence, as we were many other candidates. And uh, th so through the weekend, uh, today's Monday. I'm sorry, I'm just, my days are running together. Um, and I, I believe it would have been maybe Friday. Uh, probably a few days ago where that heated up even more, but it's really been kind of going on for quite some time. I would never speak with anybody without talking to their administration, which I did. They have an interim uh, uh, individual, Tony Hernandez is his name, a guy I know. Um, and so, you know, we were able to execute all that over the weekend and, and have an opportunity to visit with them, and, and that's where we came to that conclusion last night. Mike, can you... Uh No, I can't say that, and I wouldn't say that because he is the person that we offered this job to and the only person that we offered this job to. So I will tell you that for sure. He was the only person that this job was offered to. But you had two coaches and Matt Painter and Mike Anderson who really had emotional attachments to the schools. And when you look at Frank Haight, do you see a guy who could you know, grow with this program and, and be in Missouri for a long time? I do, and we do. And I think that was something that was that's very difficult to kind of – better out when you're going through the entire process and 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 so I just I, I believe that through the genuineness that he was displaying through the understanding for a lot of people where he's come from how he's grown up different types of things that we we talk about you know it's not all about the X's and O's part of this it's all these other components as well too um, we believe and I think you'll have an opportunity to hear that directly from him tomorrow but uh, I think that this is clearly a place that he sees as, as a place he wants to be for a long time matter and if, if in fact these questions did get asked and how you, how you answered them? No, what I would tell you is it is a procedural issue. You know, again, when, when you are offering employment, particularly on multi-year contracts, something over five years, that that is subject to Board of Curators approval. That's a standard deal that we have at Mizzou. And when that happens, then there is discussion that takes place in a closed session of the Board of Curators, and then they make a determination on the support of that. And so I had recommended that to the board. They had discussions on that in the uh, executive session, and then they come out of that with, uh, with the approval that we, that we talked about here today. But as far as the discussions that take place on that, that's not something that would be appropriate for me to talk about. Can you talk about the, then the comments that the curators made in public where they were very uh, forthright in saying, we, it, it's 50-50 if we're going to approve this? No, I, I really don't think it's appropriate for me to, to respond to, you know, other people's comments and, and what they may have. We have great leadership at Mizzou. We have a great group of members of our board of curators. We have a terrific president, terrific chancellor. So I, I think for me to be able to comment on, on other folks' thoughts is inappropriate for me to do that. Mike, on your own thoughts, uh, you, you had mentioned Outer perception is that this day could be awkward as well. Was mm -hmm. it for you? I, I would tell you that, uh, you know, from a, for, from a personal standpoint, as you know, uh, I, I usually don't try to talk about my, my personal feelings on things, but I want to respond to your question. No, it wasn't an awkward day for me. Our confidence level in what we're doing and the support we have from our leadership team uh, is, is terrific, and it's been terrific for a long time. So, no, it wasn't an awkward day for me. Mike, when you hire a guy that's kind of putting your reputation on the line more so than if you were hiring a guy that a safer hire a guy that has a better record I think so I, I think that's safe to, to say and I you know I believe in that and that's part of the reason that you know I, I know that decisions have to be made and that's part of my responsibility it's to make those decisions and yes I think that goes right along with uh, with what we do in our positions and so with that being able to identify those characteristics and knowing and believing that they're going to fit in with your system sure and that's going to reflect back on you there's no question that I understand that no, it, it doesn't. And I, I would tell you, I, 
pretty quickly I'd respond to that. You, you always keep it in your mind. You're always thinking about that. But I think it's more about Mizzou. And I think it's not about me and my reputation. And it's not about me and my position. You're trying to do what you can do best for, this insti for our institution. And when you're doing that, you understand that sometimes you're making to make decisions that are always that are popular or maybe not popular, but you're not making them for those reasons. You're making them for the values of our institution, and you're making them for those values that we talked about. But it really didn't necessarily give me pause. Mike, as far as Coach Hayes' experience in the Big 12 uh, with being an assistant in two other programs, is, will he be able to establish the kind of in-state recruiting base that you're looking for for a Missouri coach? He's coming from a place, obviously, that's not geographically centered in the Midwest. Yes, I believe he'll be able to do that. I think with his work ethic, with his connections that he has, the recruiting experience that he has, whether it's in Big 12 footprint or nationally, he's got to transfer that here to the state of Missouri. But let me tell you, that's, there's a lot of work ahead. That's not something that happens just because you hire someone. That happens because there's diligence there, there's sincerity, there's outreach, there's effort, there's a continual growth relative to relationships. Recruiting is based upon your institution, no question, the success of your program, but it's also and really based on relationships, trust. And I think that's what we've seen in, in guys like Gary Pinkle. And that's what we've seen in guys like Aaron Earlywine. There's a develop of trust, and it takes time to develop that. And I think that you're going to see with Frank, he'll be doing that at a very high level, but it's going to take some time to develop that in the state of Missouri, no question. Has he let you know about any assistance, whether he's going to bring them with him or whether he's going to try to have somebody with more of a connection to the state? He, he has. We've had some of those discussions, and that would be something I think that you'll have an opportunity to talk to Frank about tomorrow. both I think really and to answer it isn't what just one or the other I think it's both Steve and I and I believe he saw it as that but he's a guy that certainly saw to me and presented to, to us that he sees that as an opportunity I mean when you're a new coach and you have an opportunity not only to inherit a great group of kids right with with a lot of talent but at the same time you have a chance to be able to complement that with folks that you're going to focus in on as well too I think he chooses and I do too to see that really as a blessing as an opportunity You know, I can't speak for what the fans' expectations would be. The fans' expectations should be high, though. I mean, we're the University of Missouri. Okay, we're Mizzou, and we're a program that should be competing at the highest levels in our league and the highest levels in the country, and that's what our fans should expect. We don't want them to expect anything less than that. But to be able to place expectations on Frank right now as you kind of take a look, I mean, to me, that would all be kind of conjecture. I have no idea. You know, I think what we need to focus in on is, how are we doing academically? What are we focusing on growing these men? And let's get to work and seeing what we're doing to be able to build this, to be able to be, be winning a bunch of games next year. Mike, this is your, uh, I guess, third basketball hire in 12 years. What's your confidence level that it's the last one you make? <laughs> My confidence level is high. It is. A good question, okay? But, but, it's, but it's high. You know, and I think that when you go into this, you understand it's a lot of work, it's a lot of energy, it impacts an awful lot of people. And certainly, you want that not only for like me, you want that for Tiger Nation as well, too. I mean, it's important. When we adopt someone, when we accept one into our family, they're part of our team. They're part of our family, Tiger Nation. And I think that our fans, our institution, our communities, our department, they want to, they see that and they're going to embrace. We want to embrace people when they come here. And so you want to be with them for a long time. Mike, we've got a quote in here from uh, Coach Barnes. Have you spoken with Coach Barnes? And how important is his connection with you? Well, let me say I've spoke with a lot of people, Darren. You know, uh, Coach Barnes is a guy that I know really well. And, but there's an awful lot of people that I spoke with uh, out there. Um, how important is his connection with UT? I don't think his, important, his, importance, his connection with Texas is as important as his understanding of who we are in the Big 12, how it is to win in this league, right? And at the same time, understanding how tough it is to win how tough it is to win in the ACC, how to be able to bring all that together. But certainly Rick's a guy that all of us, and me in particular, have a high, high regard for. And uh, he's one of many that we talk to. Mike, just looking at this ACC record, did, did you expect a, a big fan backlash or did maybe the, the degree of negativity instantly catch you off guard a little bit? 
Uh, I don't know if it, you know, I maybe caught me off guard a little bit, Dave. I, I think that um, with us, I, I do think from a process standpoint, it's challenging. I think when it, when word gets out that your your next coach is going to be Frank Haith, and then you don't have an opportunity to be able to um, to communicate to your fan base and to everyone what this process is, just like we're talking about tonight. I do think, again, that comes back to earlier, the uncertainty of that, the, 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 the knowledge base of, of what that is, why, and the reasons why, I think it puts people in, in limbo. And when that happens and they weren't sure of all that, certainly they react. But, but uh, no, I think it was, uh, you know, it was, it was passionate. Did you talk to him at all about Tiger Nation doesn't seem to be opening their arms just yet? I mean, did you try to get him ready for what he might be doing yes. initially? Yes, I did. I told him this is a show me state, and it is, and that's, that's who we are as a state, and I, he knows that, and he'll have an opportunity to address that uh, tomorrow. But I think that knowing the guy that he is, learning the guy that he is, the type of person, uh, he's excited about that committed. He's looking forward to showing people who he is and what we can do, and we're looking forward to him doing that as well. People could see that as a negative, and it's something I've talked with uh, John Sessel and a lot of other people associated with Missouri sports about the fact that you do really have to kind of prove yourself to these fans sometimes. What's the positive side of that? Oh, I, I, think, the, I think the positive side of that is, is that the, the passion side that fans want to be able to see, the positive side of the challenge out there to be able to say, hey, look, here's who we are. I understand. You need us to show you. I think that that get all of us that are competitive, and I'm a really competitive person. I know many of us, I mean, very competitive. I like to win a lot. I think when that happens, if you're a real competitor, you want to show people. You want to get out there and get after it. And I think that you're going to see that in Frank Haith, as you do in a lot of people that work with, work, work with us here at, at Mizzou. Have you had um, a chance to address the players, or have you uh, at all in this process? Uh, you know, I've texted uh, our kids uh, various times throughout the process, but uh, I have not had a chance to talk with them over the course of the last 24 hours. Um, but I know that uh, tomorrow, uh, Coach will have an opportunity to visit with them in the morning. Uh, and visit with his new team tomorrow morning. And I know those guys are, I know the guys. They're, they'll be excited. They're pumped. So. Mike, I realize the contract details remain pending, but uh, is it your expectation that the buyout provision will be greater than it was for Coach Anderson's It is, Alan. And so when we, I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but yes, yes, it is. Ballpark, um, I, it's, I would say it's double. You know, so it's a it's a one million plus buyout for the first uh, I think two years. But I really I probably shouldn't other until we get that contract in front of us. Decreases as the yes, it will decrease throughout time, and you'll see that when we all get together. So I'll have all the details of that for you. After seven seasons in the ACC, no winning record, how can you communicate? How can you ensure Mizzou fans that Frank Cape is a winner? I think that you got to come back to the show me, show me component of that, and we understand that from our spam base. You have to be able to say, we know that he's been competing in the in the toughest conference in the country year in and year out. We know that he's been doing that at a program that doesn't necessarily have the same resources and level of success that we've had at the University of Missouri, and we know that putting him in our environment, in Tiger Nation, and us embracing him is going to put him in a very fertile area for him to be able to excel. I think that's really got to be our response because uh, certainly from our fan base, I've seen that in the 13 years I've been here. They, they're fine with all that, and I understand that, but they're saying that's great. you got to show us, and, and I think that's what we'll, we'll be doing. Any final questions? Do you feel like you kind of maybe have earned the benefit of the doubt on a hire like this? I mean, you've been here for a long time and have had some yeah. I don't know, Joe. I, I don't know if I could really, if I could judge that. I just, you know, one thing I just, I would, I would hope, and I'm hopefully that our folks know is, I mean, I love Mizzou. I mean, this is, I love this place. And so everything that we do, every minute that we're on the job, we're always looking at ways to try to improve this for our student athletes, for our students, for our fans. And so I don't know about earning anything one way or the other, but I do think that over the course of that time, I hope it's been been at least recognize how much I care and Rocky and I and Jake care about Mizzou and we you know we love to do things that are going to move us forward and we know that this is going to be doing that for us. Mike I know you've got several factors that we've talked about a lot with several of these hires and, and there may have been other people that met some of these was there kind of an X factor with Frank was there one thing that just told you this is the guy we want to go after? Um, I don't know if there's anything one in particular I think a lot of times when you get down to these there's 
a lot of data that's driven. There's a lot of analyses that go, goes with that. But then there becomes a feel, and it's kind of hard to define what that is. I think that when you can see, have a similar vision with someone, when you communicate in a way that you can be able to see things beyond just, you know, shooting a basketball and understanding how it fits within a whole, if you get that feel for that, um, then that's kind of a moment where it's almost like an aha moment. And I think that that happens in every hire, and certainly that's, that happened uh, with Frank. But I, I don't know exactly which, which moment that would be. How big of a role did Gary Link and the other members of the coaching search committee play um, in this whole process? A ton. I mean, they're great. They're great teammates. I'll tell you, Mike Middleton and Gary Link and Whit Babcock, I mean, they were, they were terrific. I mean, those are guys that are part of our team and you rely on. They have great perspective, great uh, – great vision on certain things. They can be able to analyze things in different ways, different perspectives. That's really important, I think, to be able to provide different perspectives. You know, a lot of times when you see it through one set of eyes, it might look a certain way, but if you got other sets, it really kind of helps you analyze it. And they were, they were great, all of them were. Were they all on board with the hiring of Frank? Absolutely, yeah. Like looking at this process as a whole, you know, did this unfold as you had hoped it would? I think so. I, I do. I think that certainly that other than a timing standpoint when information uh, rolls out uh, and then you have an opportunity then to talk about it like we are have now 24 hours later, you know, you'd hope that that time would be a little bit more condensed as in like right now, okay, so that you could be able to do it. But I think going forward um, that that's something that, uh, that you would hope it would have been a little tighter. I think the other thing that, uh, that's interesting, it's a, wow, it's a different world out there. I mean, I, I don't know, people are firing out tweets and texts and stuff like that that have no validity, no truth, and, and it's just gone, and then it's gone. I mean, that thing with relative to, um, to the previous guy that we were talking about, I mean, that was unbelievable to me. You know, so to me, that's a different environment, that's a different world, and, and so that's something that in the future, boy, you hope it would be different, but with the one thing I learned, <laughs> it probably isn't going to get any different, it probably will get worse, you know, and so you have to be prepared for that. And I think that certainly that's something that uh, there's a lot of lessons learned from a, a lot of people. You don't think there's any way you could possibly ensure that the level of communication that comes out or that gets leaked out from whatever source which comes out would, would be uh, nullified? Is, do I think there's any way? Hey, well, I have no idea. I mean, I had people I mean, texting and tweeting about me that I'm in, like, Chicago one day. I don't know. I, you guys know more about stuff than I know. I, where it comes from and how it's validated, it's just amazing to me. I mean, it's, but it is what it is, and uh, and that's unfortunate because that certainly, um, you know, doesn't get to you know what we're all trying to do. But but again, as I said, it is what it is, and and uh, we're just excited to move forward. So With the communication being the way it is, people finding out things, you know, true or false, so much faster that searches in the future might have a little bit more of an openness to them that some information is better than. I don't know. You're, you're hitting me too soon afterwards. I have to really kind of digest this. Um, Charles Davis over in our journalism school, he's great. He's one of our great professors here. And the, the si Society of Professional Journalists, right? SPJ. Am I right? I'm talking to a bunch of folks that should know that. He always has me, he, he, he gives me the opportunity a lot to come and speak to that. And that's one thing that we, we have talked about in the past. Um, and they ask, a lot of times the students ask me about transparency and everything. And I haven't thought about that as much. And now that you asked that question, I'll be giving it some thought after I get a little rest. So, Sticking with the communication theme, uh, obviously a lot of people have mentioned things about um, you know, their, their own opinions on, on how you're doing at your job. Do you, how, how does that person affect you? I don't really, and I, and I would tell you, I said this before, from a personal standpoint, I try to really not share that uh, as much, I think, with all of us. Uh, that we try to stay focused on, on doing the right things, making the right decisions for the right reasons, staying true to our values. And, but what comes along with our job, I mean, that's part of the job of who we are. I mean, we're very public in who we are. It, you open yourself up to a lot of opinions from a lot of people. But shoot, man, I wouldn't have that any other way. I mean, I love what I do, and I'm passionate about it. And uh, certainly, I'd rather have people be passionate about what I'm doing than not, not really care about what we're doing. You know, that, that's something I think that's important for, for all of us. A lot of the fans said they were going to email members of the Board of Curators protesting to hire Frank. Sure. Um, did that come up in your discussion with the board? No, I mean, anything that we talked about with, with the board and that, that, that's not appropriate for me to talk about that. You know, that's something that, uh, that I, I can't really comment on. Do we have any questions about I, message board related? Uh, oh. um, yes. There might have been maybe, as you said, an X factor that jumps out when interviewing Coach Hyde, but was there one that you noticed near when interviewing Coach Pinkle or Coach Pinchin or Coach Irvin Wine or any of the 
other yeah. people that you brought up? Was there something that you saw mirrored in them that you saw? I think that the passion, I think that I saw, that I saw the commitment, I think that you see, and it's displayed in all different ways. You know, Coach Pinkle has a certain way that he displays it. Robin has a certain way. Um, various coaches that we, Wayne Kreklow does. But I think it's the passion. I think it's the sincerity. And I think it's the also the compassion. I think that's important in what we do. You know, I think a lot of times people see us as being very hard charging, very focused, very driven, you know, very, you know, like regimented and everything. Uh, that's great. But when you're dealing with people, I mean, I want to be able to see that compassion that comes through that as well, too, because how are you going to be able to relate to people on a personal level? And I think when you see that, there's a commonality on those three areas that I think you'll see uh, through all of our coaches, and I and I will I know you're going to see that with Frank Haith. Uh, what was the excluding just news coming out about it last night? Uh, what was the most difficult aspect of making this hire? Oh, I don't know if I could pinpoint it, there. It, Hires like this are always difficult in lots of ways because you recognize how important it is to our institution, how important it is to our student athletes. I mean, shoot, we've got a team that I really care a lot about, and they're looking at me saying, hey, Mike, let's go. Let's go get things going. And so um, it's, it's difficult <laughs> just because you have so many things that you're trying to consider, and uh, you're trying to match up all of those qualities that you're looking for with all of those considerations. But I can't really pinpoint one thing. Mike, is a document like this standard practice, what they're saying about Frank Cake? Why, why was it important to the athletic department to get a something like this out there? We haven't done a hire, uh, in, I don't think, in a while as much. I don't know if we did as many on Robin, maybe when she, but I think we did. I think we did some quotes on Robin. We did on Mike when he was hired. We did on Gary Pinkle. Uh, we did on lots of people. I think that's kind of standard, what we do in our industry. So it isn't just uh, at Mizzou. So wherever they do hires, a lot of times you're going to have testimonials that you'll accompany with that as well, too. So. No magic to that. That's kind of what most of us in the country do. Okay. Do it. Let me. We're all good. Okay. Thank you guys very much for being here. Appreciate your support, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Joe.